Hi everyone, Katie here, Alba Astro. Um, I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and happy 2023 to you all. So this is my first video of the new year. And what I've decided is to bring up some old data of the teddy bear nebula. Um, for those that aren't aware of this, particular nebula. Its proper name and title is SH2171 or NGC7822. But it is affectionately known as the teddy bear nebula because if you rotate the image a certain way you will actually see what looks like a teddy bear's face. Now I captured this data um, around about August, September of last year. It's not got a lot of integration time on it, but we're going to work on what I have got at the moment, uh, just to let you see. So here we have our three um, images. I'm shooting in mono, and um, I'm just going to do a wee stretch here to let you see what it looks like. So this is our O3 and hydrogen alpha and our sulfur so i'm going to go up to tile these windows let you get a better look and we'll move you out the way just now now as you can see we have got this line here running down and through same with this image so that will have to get cropped out but it was just to let you see, and obviously this needs raised to kind of match these two. So I'll give that a try just now, and we'll go into, we'll click on that. We'll go into the histogram, bring up a preview, and I am going to just gently, ever so gently, try and raise. Oops too bright. I'd say that's about right to match with these ones. So that's what we'll do for the time being. And I'll go back in and we will cascade these windows again. And um, now I know everybody's got their own workflow and how they do things, but what I am going to do is I'm going to bring up the histogram transformation and we're going to do our stretch just now, okay? And we'll combine the channels together. Actually, we'll do that first and um, make it into one image. Um, so let's do that first, guys. So we go down to channel management and combine these together. And we'll do it in the SHO palette. So we go in, yep, and HA, yep, and now our oxygen. And we will apply that. And we'll do a re stretch. And we'll get this. <laughs> awful <laughs> image but hey this is what this is all about is learning and getting it to a color palette that you like you know for your own taste so i am going to lower these just to reduce them and we'll move them down here out the way I don't like deleting anything off my screen until I'm completely finished uh, doing what I'm doing. Just in case I make a big, you know, like a big mistake and I have to go back. So, um, now I'm going to stretch this image completely and save it. Oh, let's do a reset. Um, I'm going to drag the triangle down. And the white screen comes up and you can either click on the monitor here or click reset. And there we go, image saved. 
So, first things first, I am going to crop this image and um, get rid of all that darkness down the side here. And keep that a bit tidy. Okay, and click OK. And there we go. Make the image larger. Right, so I'm seeing lots of magenta in this um, image. And if you have got all your updates on Pixinsight up to date, you will have in your utilities, you know, all these tabs. And I use this one a lot to correct the magenta stars, which is fab. So I'm going to do that just now. I'm quite happy with the default settings. It does a really good job, so I don't need to play about with anything. I'll just hit Execute and let it do its thing and close it off. And just to let you see what it's done, if you just look at some of the stars over here, I'll go back. Oh, I'm forgetting you can't see it because it's inverted. Anyway, but as you've seen it earlier, it was very, very much magenta stars. Now, um, I don't know if all you guys know <clears throat> uh, or follow Lucomatico, but uh, on his YouTube channel, he provided a link to a Google Drive. And in that Google Drive is all the process icons that Bill Blanchin has pre-processed for you and there's also a, a short video where it shows you how to use them and apply them and these icons are like this here clone for starless star reduction methods your HOO and SHO um, I use this a lot, the uh, modified SCNR, and I also use the masks that he provides as well. Uh, before I had downloaded these, I was doing everything manual, and I found it, you know, great. I enjoy the editing side of things, but um, time is precious at times, and um, people don't want to waste hours and hours processing and editing, so... Um, these actually are a godsend in that respect because they do everything for you with one click. So I'm going to just show you, for instance, the modified SCNR. And all you're doing, he's already done all the math and everything in here for you. You can change the amount from, you know, like the 100 down to whatever, uh, so that, you know, depending on how much um, of the green you want to take out, that type thing. The same as your actual SCNR button. Um, so he's already got it sorted and it should take quite a bit out for me. There you go. There you've gone from, let's see, from all that green and some yellow to the yellow and you can see the blues in there and some nice yellows round in amber colour. It's fabulous, absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> so if you get a chance, go on to your YouTube and go into Locomatico and he has, as I say, he's got videos up for Picks in Sight and he provides the link to Bill Blanchin's Picks in Sight icons, uh, process icons, which will help, uh, you know, uh, an amazing amount. So anyway, um, what we're going to do here is we'll zoom in and as you can see, there's quite a bit of noise in this image. Um, there's a lot of nebulae and I want to bring that out more. Um, you know, these structures and especially here, at the teddy bear face. I don't know if you can see it. There's the eyes. There's the nose and the little mouth. 
you know, and that's why it gets that name. But there's also like pillars in there, if you can see these structures of pillars. Um, it's just amazing, like elephants, trunks, there's everything. Such a great nebula. So if you get the chance to shoot it, please do. Um, our weather hasn't been very kind to us again, so I don't know when I'll get out to shoot. Uh, the moon is up full at present, so I'm quite happily going to wait and see if the weather changes in the next week or so. So let's get back to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to script. As I say, if your Pixin site is up to date, you should have these tabs. And there is this one here, which is Dark Structure Enhance. And I use that to bring out more enhancement on these areas. I don't change the defaults. I'm happy with what it's been doing. I have tried it with different defaults and one way it's too dramatic, the other it's not enough. So um, I've left it at the default because it seems to do what it's meant to do. Um, it's got that sweet spot. And I'll show you the before and after just to let you see. And it goes through it pretty quick, as you can see, it goes through the three channels, which is great. So we'll zoom in just to let you see. Have a look here at the dark structures, folk. There you go, you see that, how soft it is. And there it is after it's brought it out a bit more, which is just fantastic. Um, you're, you've obviously also got your um correct the magenta stars that will take out the redness and stars and you've got your advanced sharpening tool and we'll, we might use that later we'll see <clears throat> so what i'm going to do is go up and do um a color calibration just to you know get the the balances right and the old channels kind of balance out so it's just, I just drag and drop. There we go. How cool is that, guys? You know, the beautiful blue that's there. So that's done a good job. Um, next, what I'm going to do is, now, um, normally I would go in and do a dynamic background extraction, but I'm going to give the automatic background extract a try because sometimes that does just as good a job as the dynamic so we go down subtraction and we're going to replace that and i'm doing that just so that the other screen will come up and it will show you what it's taken out and that is another one that's quick now look at that there's what it's actually taking away from this image see that all that was in the background so it's done its job actually really really well so i'm quite happy with that folks um i'm going to go in and do a wee curves transformation and i'm going to go into saturation just to see and ever so gently just bring it up i'm going to show you where doing a stark there you go Right, just to let you see, but I don't want to go as drastic as that. I just a gentle push and raise that up a bit, and um, I might give it another try actually, and we'll go down into the middle a bit just to see these blues. Can you see that? Fabulous! Just to bring that blue structure out a bit more of that blue nebula so we've got that and um just checking everything here guys excellent now as you can see i've got a lot of this yellow color in the background with the stars um what i'm actually going to do just now is 
now is take the stars out of the image so that I can work on the nebulae. Now you can go into your star net and uh, click create a star mask, make sure that's there and you would drag and drop and it will give you your star mask. But once again, as I say, Bill Blanchin has actually done similar for us and it's called Clone for Starless. If I click on that, it will do the same job. It gives me a clone of the image. Okay. And then I go into my star net. And that way I can keep this image as well. I'll just reduce it and put it down here. Um, that way, if, as I say, if anything goes wrong, I've got a backup. Um, but generally, it does do a great job. And as I say, it will come up with my star mask, but it will also come up with my starless image. And I can work on those two. And if anything goes wrong, I can delete them and do it over again because I still have this. Plus, I've got these if I want to go back to the very beginning and start all over again. So, as I say, you give yourself options. Unless you're extremely confident in everything you do and you know that you're not going to make any mistakes, then you can delete everything and keep your screen clean and tidy. But um, sometimes I get distracted and things, you know, happen and uh, I forget. And I'm like, oh, where did I last go? What did I last do? And yes, I can look here and it'll tell me, but um, sometimes it's just as quick for me to start over again. So there we go. Now there's my star mask, and you can see the stars aren't looking fantastic, but I can fix them. I'm going to reduce that and put it down there. And the same with this, I'm going to put that there. And so as you can see, the, uh, you can see all the colour nebulae much better when the stars aren't there and that's what I'm going to work on. Um, I love this blue and yellow. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to take some of the noise out just now and I never ever do it. 100 or 90, I feel it makes the image just maybe too soft, so I'm going to go down to about 75. There we go. And I'm going to take the noise out and uh, just to let it smooth it over a bit and uh, make it look more palatable. And uh, then I'm going to play with these masks and bring out these colours but there's also your range mask where you can go in and do the exact same thing that's what these are um, if you go up to process and go down to um, mask I'll show you go down to mask generation and you can do a range selection Let's take that out of the way. And when you bring up your preview, you'll see a white screen. And what you'll do is you'll just push the slider along until your target comes into view. And you don't want to bring everything in you, because you're bringing in um, a lot of noise as well, um, showing that up. So I can see the teddy bear's face here and the nebulae that I want. I'll bring in a bit more actually, so I'll raise that. So there we go. And when you've done that, go to the smoothness tab and just straight up to 100% on that. And once you've done that, you will click OK. And get rid of the preview window and your mask comes up and you would normally drag and drop and as you know everything that's in red is protected the only thing you'll be working on is what you can see here right and 
if I click on that, I can hide the mask. It's still there. As you can see, the, the mask is still there. And I would go into Curves Transformation and I would bring up the the uh, preview window and I would play with the RGB channels. And it's the same with these masks here. You can bring up, instead of going into ma um, the mask generator, Bill Blanchin has already got these masks on hand for you and it's doing the exact same thing you just bring it up and you drag and drop so we'll do it both ways just to let you see so we've got the preview window up and what i'm going to do is go into the this chat this tab here and i'm just going to show you just for the purpose of this tutorial the yellow see it will bring up more yellow and just as I say for the purpose of this you can go into your blue channel and bring up your blues make them purple take them down make them yellow green it's up to you you play with the channels until you get the color that you want coming through okay and I'll reset that and I'm going to, there's a tad of green in there. If I take that down, look at that. Do you see that? Wow. I don't want to take it all out, but just ever so gently. And I'm just going to do a tad of luminance just to let you see guys you can brighten it up but just be careful don't don't overdo it you know and same again you can go into saturation and bring out all your colors it's up to you what you want to add and what you want to take away it's your own preference whatever palette suits your tastes that is exactly all it is um so i'm happy with that and we'll take that down and i'm going to get rid of that also the preview window and the mask is still on but if i go up here where it says remove mask there we go and i can get rid of that off my screen now as i say play play with your palette don't be afraid to you know go in and manipulate your image and get out of it what you want i'm going to go up and i am going to do a curves transformation and i'm going to do there rgb just ever so slightly and i'm going to draw this in and darken the background just a tad there we go and i'll put them out of the way now just to let you see what it's going to look like with the stars on it so actually hold on we'll make that image full same as this one and it's up to you if you want to keep all the stars in it or if you want to reduce them just um, a small amount so just to give you an idea if you go into morphological um, that's it at a hundred percent. So I'm going to just show you. There you go. It's reduced a lot of the stars, but you can see the nebula is going to be out more, which is fantastic. So it's up to you. How much do you want in the image, or how much do you want to take away? So, for instance, if I say take away eighty percent. 
I'm happy with that. So that's what I'm going to go with. And what I'll do then is go into Pixel Math and I'll reset because this is what I was working on before and it keeps coming back up. <laughs> and what I'm going to do now is um, I'm not going to create a new image. I'm just going to go straight into Expression Editor and I'm going to go into Starless because that's that image. I know I should change the tag and rename it something else, but I know I know myself what image it is. And click on your add or plus sign. And we're going to go down and add, double click, star mask. So starless plus star mask. And then once you've done that, apply it. And there, there is our image. So, and that way, if you've got your star list, you can always put that up on your social media with stars, without stars. Let people see the difference. So, there we go, guys. How good does that look? I'm going to go in and do another background extraction just to see. And let's see what it takes out. Yeah, it's taking a lot of that grey out. Fantastic. I'm happy with that, guys. Don't know about you, but I'm happy with that. The yellow's there. Maybe take down the saturation a bit if you want. Or you can um, brighten it up just a bit. Um, I'm just going to lift this up just a bit, just to let you see more. There we go. Happy days. Well, I hope this helped you. And all that's left in it now is to go up and save your image in whatever format you wish to do. And um, if you do, you know, what I might do is actually put a link into my own data and let you play with that if you want. Um, other than that, if you if this helped you, if this video helped you in any way, please let me know and uh, share your work with me and let me see. Um, till the next time, folks. Have a good one. Bye.